I love everything about personal development and self-development because I've been working on myself for a few years. I've come from a traumatic background and I've gone through it. So I've taken a very big interest in self-development. I'm also a marketing leader, so I love all things marketing. And I love strategically thinking about things and making brands work for businesses. And I'm a family person. I am a mom. And what I found is juggling all three of my passions can be somewhat daunting. So I thought, let me just do a video about how to time manage all of these things. I often get questions on how how the hell are you posting content regularly? How are you on TikTok? How are you managing being a mom? How are you like doing all of this stuff while still like being a mom? And when people ask me this question, I'm always like, uh, you just do, like your life doesn't stop when you become a mom. But the truth of the matter is that, you know what, you can't give everything 100% and there is somewhat of a format that I have been following and I'm here to share that. So there's a couple of things I want to talk about regarding time management. And there's a few sections that I want to tackle in this video. The one is how to time block. And I'm going to take you through my process of time blocking. I'm also going to talk about how to prioritize things and how to decide what is more important than the other. Sort of my project management knowledge that I will use to showcase how we do that. I want to touch on delegating and outsourcing. And finally, we'll touch on how to set boundaries. Okay, so first, let's talk about setting priorities. What I like to do is I use my phone and I have a notepad and I have different sections. So the one section is for the front row, which I know I need to put all my content ideas in. And the other section is called family. And my third section is all the stuff that I need to do for myself, because if I don't do it, then I'm going to go insane, right? Under family, I have all the things I need to do for my family. The school stuff, it is the personal errands, the toiletries, the daily milk and bread runs, whatever it is that we need for the home, I put it in that to-do list and I prioritize it in terms of when do I need it. So for example, if I need to buy bread and milk, or if I need to remind my husband to buy bread and milk or vice versa, then that we know is something that has to happen only at four o'clock when I'm done for the day. I like to work off my phone for a lot of these to-do lists, but you can also like create a Google sheet that's shared between you and your partner or whoever else that is involved in the family group so that everybody knows what their tasks is. You kind of have to deal with your personal life like how you would run your, your team at work. You have to have those same organizational skills. I feel like if it's successful at work, if your project management style is successful at work and you use the same method at home, it's going to work, right? We often forget that when we're at home, we don't necessarily have to be work mode. But some of the skills work, like your monthly meetings, your check-ins, your to-do list, the project management side of it. So take some of the learnings from that and like just implement it in your personal life. My personal development list is a little bit different. I make sure that I have a recurring to-do list to remind me to drink water, to, I need to drink water. Hold that thought. I'm always forgetting to drink water. There we go. And then to help me to remember to drink things like water, to stand up, to like move around a little bit, I use habit tracker and it reminds me throughout the day that I need to drink water, etc. I've also put in like that I want to do my meditation in the morning. I want to journal. So I create these alerts on habit at a certain time that I know that I'm available to do that and it reminds me to do it. I have to say that this week has been really a slump for me, so I haven't been like the best ambassador to talk about this, but I am a work in progress. Okay, so now that we've got all the different to-do lists and they're in their different compartments and you're not overwhelmed by having one to-do list and it's about everything, then I prioritize it in the grouping. So for example, in my personal development, I know that if I don't do my meditation in the morning and my journaling in the morning, then I'm not going to do it for the rest of the day because I don't have the luxury of time to do it. And by the time I go to bed, I'm way too tired to even think about meditating. Meditation is probably then when I go to sleep because I'm not going to be able to focus. So if I miss that morning session, then that's out the door. So I try and maintain to do it in the morning and on the days that I don't do it in the morning, 
then I try and cover up for it like on the weekends when it's a little bit quieter and I can have a little time to myself to reflect. Then I look at my content scheduling and I look at what I need to do. I think about all the topics that I want to talk about in relation to leadership, marketing and self-development and I try to balance the three. Sometimes I don't balance it. It's just like what's what I want to talk about from my heart and what, or what I'm experiencing. And then I just put it in order of priority and I try to think about what would work for me to film this week. And if I find that perhaps I'm not going to be able to film this week, then I know I need to batch film the following week to catch up. So generally what I like to do is like on a day like today, I prefer to film more than one video to help me stay ahead. But there are times where I only have time to film just one video and then I repurpose the long form video that I do for YouTube, for TikTok and for LinkedIn, etc. It is a little stressful. Look, there are late nights that I do dedicate to video editing because I know I'm not going to get the editing time during the day because I am at work. So I edit my videos as soon as my whole family goes to bed and I sit in the dark and I edit all my videos and I can't edit the whole video in one night. So I spread it over like two to three nights and it probably takes me about four to six hours to edit. It's impossible to get everything 100% right and understanding that your time is valuable and listening to yourself when you promise yourself what to do is also important. The other thing is that you're in charge of your time. And if you're going to spend time watching Netflix, if you're going to spend time on social media, if you're going to spend time talking to people unnecessarily, then that's time being wasted and you're in charge of your time. I'm saying this because I've done this. I've binged, I've been on social media when I don't need to be on social media. I've been talking to people that I don't really need to talk to at that time. So when I calculate the time and hours spent on that versus me actually being productive, I realize that there is time in the day to do things. And then I just really just look at importance. Sometimes everything is important. So I look at it as in a sense of urgency. What do I need to accomplish today? What do I need to accomplish this week? What do I need to accomplish this month? And from that, an area of view, and then I just choose the things that are absolutely vital for me to accomplish today. As much as you're prioritizing your tasks and setting them in what's important and what's not, you also need to make some room for the fact that there are going to be some curveballs and there are going to be some change. I think a month and a half ago, I was planning to film content. So I set up everything and I was sitting on the couch ready to film. And then my husband walks through the door. But now my whole schedule is kind of messed up because like he's in the room and I'm not going to give the same vibe to the video. And then I realized that I'm just going to have to deal and do the video, even though he can hear me on the other side and not feel like shy. So it's like little things like that, that will throw you off. And then you've got to pivot. So having an adaptive mindset is important. Maybe that's another video idea. And just being malleable enough to adjust to make it work for you. Having a list to prioritize tasks is so important because if it's in your head, you're going to think about it and it's going to give you anxiety. Okay, so let's talk about the time blocking technique. I like to use Google Workspace. I love everything about Google Workspace because it just makes sense in the world that I'm working in. So whenever I need to log on or check something from anywhere, I'm able to access these documents. The reason why I use Google Workspace is because I also use non-Apple products. So... If I'm logging on from somewhere else, I know I can quickly go to my documents. Even my to-do list is there and it's just convenient. How I time block is I even do a time block to scan social media because if I don't do that, then I'm scanning all day or all at any time of the day and then I'm losing time that way and I'm not being productive. So I say to myself for an hour every day, generally mine is between 9 and 10 p.m., and for, from 9 to 10 p.m., I'm scanning social media sites. I'm replying to comments. I'm looking at trends. I'm just absorbing content uh, for that hour. But I try not to absorb too much content during the day so that I can save time to do other things and be more productive. I even time block things like praying time, eating time, meditation time, TV time, working time. And then within working time, I have 
blocks for eating during that time. I have blocks for certain tasks that I need to do for work. So I like to block almost every timestamp for everything to help me understand what I need to do. And it eases my brain as well because I know I've put it in a calendar. I've put some time to it and I know it's going to be done during that time. Initially, and sometimes even now, I don't follow it exactly like it is. Maybe I'm on a meeting that runs over. Maybe I'm feeling a little bit tired. Maybe I'm drained. Maybe I need to do some other task that suddenly comes up as pressing. So again, being adaptable and moving it around. Just say for tomorrow, I've blocked out the entire four hours to do editing. And then I realized that I actually can't do editing for four hours because I need to run an errand or I need to be at a function. I will then dismantle the four hours and maybe do one hour of editing and then move the other hours somewhere else. And because I make sure that I still prioritize it and I move it around, I don't feel so overwhelmed because I know I'm still taking care of that task. Deleting the task altogether and putting it in file 13 or not even in a file at all doesn't work for me because then I know I'm not going to get the job done. I used to do that before, just snooze and ignore the alerts, never get anything done. And then last minute, I would be like, oh shit, let me panic and let me try and do everything. And that's when I start feeling overwhelmed and getting jittery and snappy and angry and all the stuff that I'm not supposed to be. When I time block, what I like to do is to just put focus attention to it. The worst thing to do when you're on a time block is to suddenly reply to an email during that time block because you've got the notification and now you're like with me when the notification comes, I can't stop myself. I have to go and check what that message or email is about. So to help me to focus during my time block, I turn off all my notifications so that I can focus in that time. If I'm giving half an hour to something, I need to give half an hour to something. It's human behavior to get distracted easily, but I find the times that I have Jedi focus and I do the things that I promised I'm going to do, I have a much more productive day. And then also I feel happier about myself and I'm very much more at peace with how my day went when I follow the checklist and I follow the goals and the time blocks that I've kept for myself. But on the days that I like skip it, ignore the notifications and do my own thing, I feel much more overwhelmed and I feel much more stressed at the end of the day. My recommendation is just when you decide to do something, like keep the promises that you've set for yourself for that day as much as you can. Okay, so the next section is about delegating and outsourcing. We know that it is better not to have servants. That's what Sri Swami Sivananda, the founder of the Divine Life Society, that we'd rather do the work ourselves than have servants or not to rely too much on servants because it teaches us to work hard and to respect what we have and to lead a simple life but high thinking. However, we also need to be adaptive in the environment that we are in. And in the environment that we are in currently, we are not coping. So we outsource help to clean our house. Now, this doesn't happen regularly. It happens when we need help to clean, to spring clean the house. The reason why we chose to do that is because we realized that in order for us to still stay disciplined and to not be like pigs, we can't have someone come in every day because then we're just going to get lazy and complacent and not appreciate the things that we have. You have to learn how to delegate. You have to learn how to let go and allow people to do the work the way they find the best method to do the work. Yes, you put in processes. Yes, you put in like rules. But the method in which they would execute it might not necessarily be the way you would execute it and that's okay because everybody has a special way of doing it as long as the work is being executed at i would say 70 percent we can work on the 30 percent a lot of the times i find that when i don't delegate a task and i'm trying to do everything at once i feel overwhelmed and then i realize that if someone else can do it 70 percent good versus you doing it at a hundred percent but because you can't get to it you're not even doing it at all. So it's not even 100% anymore. It's better than having nothing at all, right? So delegating at work is also very important and trusting your team. They're going to make mistakes and they're going to learn from those mistakes. That is what is beautiful about leading teams. 
Another thing you can outsource is things like cleaning your car. You can have your kids help you out with certain things like at the end of the day, you need to tidy up the clutter, maybe wash the dishes. If they're old enough to pick up their toys and put it in the toy box, let them do that. It teaches them responsibility. It teaches them that they need to take ownership of their things and they can't just leave things scattered. It doesn't work all the time, but I think repetition in motherhood is also like what we do all the time. We're always like, I told you 50,000 times to do it. That's what we do. That's our job. But repetition is something that will work eventually. I'm pretty sure because I used to be a child once and my mom would say something 5,000 times and only on the 5,000th time I would like get it. And now as like an adult, I don't even believe, I can't even believe that I'm an adult. Like that's even another story. Like what? But as an adult, I realize that maybe this woman that I thought was so crazy as a child, maybe she had some valid points, right? <laughs> okay, so our next section is making time for personal development. I cannot make time for personal development. But if I don't do it in the morning, then it doesn't get done. Like then I don't do anything. <laughs> I don't make, if I don't meditate, if I don't exercise, if I don't journal, if I don't read God's word in the morning, I don't do it later on it's just how i am and i've come to terms with it so i was never a morning person i used to be someone that just didn't even have a sleep time or a wake-up time i was very ill disciplined that way and then when i became a mom i realized oh shoot i actually can't do this i need to be the one that's responsible now because they depend on me to like get stuff done so I pivoted and I now am a morning person. I started really like hard. I didn't gradually move into waking up early. I just said, I'm going to wake up early from tomorrow. So the first day I woke up at four in the morning, I was like super tired by two o'clock and I did it again and again and again. And I tried to do it for 21 days. And by the 21st day, it was a breeze. My body woke up on its own, like 3.50, it would be awake, wide awake. So the trick is to do it as often as possible that your body now thinks it's part of the routine. Then I made sure that by 9.30, 10 o'clock, I'm in bed and I'm just getting ready to sleep. There are certainly days that I don't wake up at that time. Like this week on Monday, I woke up at 4 and then I snoozed until 4.30. So I woke up technically at 4.30. And then it was a great day. But then I also listened to my body on Tuesday and Wednesday and I didn't do it. Now I know I'm going into the weekend. My body will be a little bit more relaxed and I'm able to wake up earlier. So I'll try and do it over the weekend to catch up at least at a minimum of three days a week. And I find if I do it as a minimum of at least three days a week, then my mental wellness is stable. If I don't do anything at all, I do not have a great time. So I try to prioritize that as much as possible. Look, the thing is, when you're a mom, the first thing to go on your list is the personal development. That's the first thing. You're like, I don't have time for my family. I don't even have time to breathe. I'm not even going to like worry about meditating and doing some exercise and journaling. Like what? Are you kidding me? I have a career and I have to be a mom. So I used to also think of it like that because I was always feeling overwhelmed. But then after trying to do it, I realized I'm actually a better mom and I'm also a better employee when I take care of my self-development. So that should be my number one priority, pouring into my own cup. Even if it's for 15 minutes a day, that's still better than nothing at all. Because when I pour into my own cup and I take care of my mental sanity, I'm a better mom, I'm a better employee, I'm a better leader, and I'm also very much more innovative in my marketing. So it's a holistic approach. So first and foremost, my priority, even on my to-do list, will be personal development. I start my day off thinking about personal development. What I've also learned is that I don't need to be super bombastic every single day. I just need to do small increments of the same thing every day. And if I miss a day or two, that's okay because long term, it's still beneficial versus not doing anything at all and just spiking here and there. That's not progress. And so we've come to the final section, which is setting boundaries. This is very important. Letting people know that I have a hard stop at one o'clock. I need to do this at five o'clock and not allowing anything or anyone to 
come in between you and your planning. Of course, you have to leave room for certain adjustments and certain curveballs, but it's not going to happen every day. If you look at the general view of your life and, and your time management, it should be consistent. It shouldn't have too many curveballs. Leave room for adaptability and adjustment where necessary. Learn to say no. It's a very important word. I didn't know how to say no. I used to allow the noise to come to me. So for example, if I was working on a task at work and someone came to me or called me, they would talk for maybe an hour. That's my time wasted. Something that we could have sorted out in 10 minutes. So I tried to be very vigilant of that. I stopped having friends come over a long time ago because I knew that if I just had people rocking up at my house uninvited, that also doesn't go according to what I've planned. Even taking phone calls, like I used to get phone calls at eight o'clock in the morning from my family. And I've told them I can't take a video call at eight o'clock in the morning when I'm trying to get my life in order with school runs and getting to work and starting my day. Like I don't have time to do a video call. They didn't hear me. They didn't listen to what I had to say. They still video called me at eight o'clock, but now I just stopped fighting that battle and I just don't answer because I'm not available at that time. I have expressed that I'm not available at this time. This is my boundary. Respect my boundary and understand that I also have to do these particular things so that I can get ahead in life. And if nobody respects your boundary, then perhaps those are not your people. Setting boundaries also means that you want to be around things and people that serve your greater purpose. If it's not serving you and your greater purpose, then they should not be in your life. Cut out every loose end that does not serve you. The energy drainers, the people that suck time from you, the vampires, the gossiping scandalous people, the people that always drop their problems on you and leave. The ones that are always wanting you to solve their problems, but they never ever like take on anything themselves. Like drop all those people because it's just too draining. And we live such a short, quick, fast paced life. We only have this life to get things done. Like we cannot be wasting time on all of those people that just suck the life out of you. So cut them loose, even if it means you starting over by yourself with no one in your life. Feed yourself with positive content and eventually you will attract the right people in your life. Managing your personal time is about making calculated, intentional decisions for yourself and ultimately for your working life and for your personal life. It starts with you fixing and churning out energy for yourself to better yourself then you can be a better version of yourself at work. You can be more dynamic at work. You can also be a better parent and a partner and a friend and all of those good things. A member of society that is functional and not losing it. We work in a very fast paced world. We are trying to achieve things. We want it all. We want to manifest the best things for ourselves. We also want to be the best, greatest versions of ourselves. And if we want all of those things, we have to be disciplined. We have to learn how to say no. We have to prioritize. We have to block time. We got to make sure that we are disciplined and that we're keeping the promises we said we are going to keep to ourselves. And always checking that vision board. Is it aligning to the things that you are doing every single day? Thank you for choosing the front row. Let's do this again next week.